The Welsh writer Elizabeth West once noted that when man invented the bicycle, he reached the peak of his attainments. Here was a machine of precision and balance for the convenience of man, and unlike subsequent inventions for man's convenience, the more he used it, the fitter his body became. Here, for once, was a product of man's brain that was entirely beneficial to those who used it, and of no harm or irritation to others. Progress should have stopped when man invented the bicycle. Last summer, when gas was inching toward $4 a gallon, I went to A1 Cyclery on the west side of Indianapolis and purchased a Trek Lime. I don't know why they named this bike for a fruit, but I've given up trying to figure out the logic of corporate America. It's a comfortable bike, sturdy and reliable, so I won't belabor its name. As the human race advances, we expect machines to do more things for us. Writers used to scratch out words using goose quills and parchment. Now we use computers. We used to wash dishes by hand. Today we have dishwashers. Back in the olden days, I used to shift the gears on my bicycle all by myself. But now the Trek Lime shifts them for me. Yes, that's right. A bicycle with an automatic transmission. When I ride uphill, the bike shifts down a gear. When I go downhill, the bicycle shifts up. When I stop, then start up again, the bicycle is in first gear. I used to have a bike that had 21 gears, and all the years I rode it, it was never in the right gear. My new bike is always in the right gear. Not having to think about what gear to put my bicycle in has made my life much easier. Diesel pickup trucks roar past me, gulping down fossil fuels, spewing noxious fumes, hastening global warming, and basically ruining our planet. They rumble to a stop at the traffic light, and I pedal past them, feeling virtuous. Now, let's talk about gas mileage, the subject which motivated my return to the bicycle. My 1998 Ford pickup gets 18 miles to the gallon. My Honda motorcycle gets 60. Not bad. But if you convert calories into gas, my Trek Lime gets around 3,000 miles per gallon. There is, of course, a downside to bicycling, and that would be dogs. I was recently bitten by a neighbor's dog. They're very nice people and felt bad about it. I don't believe in suing my neighbors. But next summer, I will be on vacation and my lawn will need mowing. A dog bite for a lawn mowing seems like a fair exchange. I hope they're watching this. When I first began riding my bicycle, people laughed at me. Then I bought a helmet and they laughed even more. But now I see more and more people riding bicycles. If our government spent a twentieth of the money it does on roads to build bicycle paths, we could save millions of gallons of gas. We'd not only save money, we'd look better, and we'd feel better too, less stressed and anxious. Think about it. When's the last time you saw a bicycle parked outside a psychiatrist's office? Another downside of bicycling is that people steal bicycles, millions of them every year. While I don't like bicycle thieves, I do admire their taste. If I ever stole anything, it would be a bicycle. Bank robbers always get caught, Convenience store robbers often get shot for their troubles, but bicycle robbers pedal merrily away and are seldom seen again. So the first thing you should purchase after you buy a bicycle is a lock for it. While in his late 60s, my grandfather, Henry Quinette of Vincennes, Indiana, pedaled his 30-pound bike 100 miles from Vincennes to Terre Haute and back. It was the high point of his later years diminished only slightly by the fact that my grandmother rode her 50-pound bicycle alongside him all the way. It is reminiscent of the old saying about Ginger Rogers doing everything Fred Astaire did, except backwards and in high heels. This Brooks leather bicycle seat belonged to my grandfather. It hangs in my garage underneath his picture, alongside his woodworking apron. It might seem unusual to memorialize one's grandfather with a bicycle seat, but while sitting on it, he experienced one pleasant mile after another under a cloudless Indiana sky, 
rolling down country lanes, watching farmers work the land, the scent of loamy earth thick around him. Elizabeth West was right. Progress should have stopped when man invented the bicycle.